All right, dealing with I just simply raised to power, so the complex numbers. These aren't that bad of problems, but the process is a little bit, um, takes some practice, let's just put it that way. So as I get going on these, we kind of have two different cases in my head. We either have I is raised to an odd power or I is raised to an even power. Now the process is basically the exact same in both cases. There's one extra itty bitty step for the odd powers as opposed to the even powers. So let's jump into an even power first and I'll walk you through this. All right, when we get going, what we wanna do is you have I raised to an even power. What I always like to do is I like to split this apart and I like to see I squared raised to a power. Okay, because I know that I squared is the same thing as negative one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this using our properties of exponents. Basically say I squared raised to what power is the same thing as in this case, I to the 18th power. So basically you take one half of whatever this even exponent is and it's gonna go on the outside. Okay, so half of 18 is gonna be nine and our exponent properties say, if I multiply these exponents together, so two times nine, I have to end up with the original, which sure enough is exactly where we are. Next thing what I wanna do is I'm gonna replace I squared with negative one. Because, you know, based on complex numbers, I squared is always equal to negative one for the same reason that the square root of negative one we'd find to be I. So if we square both sides here, we get I, squ I squared equals negative one. All right, so now that we have negative one raised to a power, I know that the result here is either gonna be a negative one or positive one, thinking about just negative one multiplied together, however many times. Based on this exponent, it's gonna tell us whether it's gonna be even, uh, it's gonna be positive or negative, okay? In this case, we have an odd number of negatives multiplied together, right? Nine copies of negative one sit next to each other multiplied together. So when you have an odd number of negatives, it's gonna turn out being negative. So in this case, it turns out being negative one. All right, let's look at if our original starting problem had an odd number of i's multiplied together. So in this case, it's very similar as far as the starting place goes, except for you're just gonna split off one of these copies of i off to the side. So we have i to the 34th, multiplied by one more copy of i up here. So if I wanted to combine these back together, you add the exponents. I remember this as i to the first power. So if you add these exponents together, you get back to your i to the 35th. But this i that we've kind of split off to the side, it's gonna kind of carry along step by step and it's gonna be part of our solution. So the next thing I wanna do is go back to that same process we just did to deal with i to an even power. I'm gonna rewrite this as i squared raised to an exponent. And then this i to the first just comes along. So remember you take half of this exponent. So half of 34 makes 17. And if I could, wanted to combine these back together, I'd multiply them back together and get me back to the i to the 34th. But from here, i squared makes negative one to the 17th power, bring that i from the side off, uh, it comes along. Now we just go back and say, well, if I have an odd number of negatives multiplied together, should that be positive or negative? Again, an odd number of negative ones multiplied together is gonna be a negative one and bring that i off to the side. You can rewrite this as just negative i if you're more comfortable with that instead of having the one hanging out, but they mean the same thing. All right, two more quick examples here. What about i to the 15th? Again, I start out and I say, okay, odd exponent. Let's break one of these i's off to the side. So i to the 14th multiplied by an i just comes off to the side. That i to the even power, negative, sorry, i squared, the seventh power means the same thing as i to the 14th. So exponent on the outside is half of this even exponent. Negative one to the seventh power, i comes along to the side. We have an odd number of negatives multiplied together. So in this case, again, negative one times i. Now, if this had been an even number, like a six on the outside, an even number of negatives multiplied would be positive. You can drop the one if you want and you're just left with negative i. All right, one more here. We have i to the eighth power. Already starts with an even exponent, so you don't have to break one of these i's off to the side to get there. 
So I jump right into saying I squared raised to the fourth power, half of our even exponent on the outside here. So negative one to the fourth power. Now we have four copies of a negative multiplied together. That's gonna to be a positive one. All right, so as you get going on these, just take your time. If you start with an even exponent, you can kind of jump right in. If you start with an odd exponent on your eye, break one of these off to the side, and then it's the same process on each one of these. All right, hope this helps you getting started on I raised to powers and simplifying these down. With a little practice, you'll get it.